Hey, this is the video competency for spirometry testing, respiratory testing using a spirometer. This can be found in your 180 syllabus um, and we'll go through each of the steps. Now, the first step says to wash your hands and assemble your equipment. So you will physically go into the next room, do your medical aseptic hand wash, come back and gather your equipment. The equipment that you need to gather for this competency includes the patient's chart, a encounter form that we will fill out, a black pen, a nose clamp, and a mouthpiece. We also in the room will have the spirometer and you need to make sure that there is a chair there for the patient uh, to sit in. Um, the, the second step then says to um, identify the patient and explain the procedure. So now what we'll do once we have our room ready, now we'll call our patient in and identify them by date of birth. So Aaron Woods, Hi, Erin. How are you today? I'm good. Good. You want to have a seat right there for me, Erin? Yes, I do. All right, Erin. Now, um, can you please give me your date of birth? April 10th, 2003. Okay. So what you want to do is identify, make sure that the date of birth that the patient has given you is the same date of birth in your chart. So now what I'm going to do is, is explain the procedure to my patient, okay? At this point, all I'm going to tell her is that we're going to be doing a breathing test, a test for her lungs, okay? Later, I'm going to give instructions on how to actually do the test. All right, Erin, today the doctor has ordered a test, okay, for your lungs. We're going to do some breathing, okay? Do you have any questions before we start? No. Okay, great. So now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to enter correct information into the spirometer. So we have two different types of spirometers. This is spirometry one. I'll do another video on how to use the other spirometer. So we'll turn the spirometer on. We'll put all the correct information in um, that we cover pretty well uh, in class and is pretty straightforward. Uh, so I'm going to put Aaron's information in. So this will take me just a second um, to get this information in. First, it's going to ask me if I want a calibration check, and I'm going to hit no. We'll talk about that uh, quality control measure later. I always want to start with one, which is new patient, and it's going to ask me, do you want to start with a new patient, and I'm going to hit yes. Now, the next thing it asks is for an ID number. We're not going to put in an ID number. We're going to use this oval to arrow down to get to name, and I'm going to put Aaron's name in um, with the keypad, which will take, again, just a second. Okay, Erin, how tall are you? Uh, about five feet. Okay, so she's five foot. Now for height, which is the next entry, patients are usually going to tell you in feet and inches. When you put it in, you have to convert it to total inches. So if she's five foot, she's 60 inches. So I have to hit 60, and then I'm going to arrow down and put in her uh, birthday. And then the next thing down is gender. And on the right hand side, you'll see one for male, two for female. So I'll put that in. The next uh, entry down then is race. So I'm going to put in the appropriate race. For some patients, you may need to ask. Other patients, um, especially with electronic medical records and a lot of the paper records nowadays, that'll automatically be in, that'll be in their chart. So you can go ahead and take care of that. Um, the next uh, entry down says adjust. You can just bypass that. So just go down for that. After that, we have weight. Erin, about how much do you weigh? Um, 135. Okay, 135. All right, so after I have that in, the next entry is going to ask you your smoked. Now, Erin obviously has not smoked. She's a child, but we still would ask and make sure that she's not a smoker, especially when you get into the teenage years. You need to ask those kids that. So she has not smoked, so it's going to say year smoke zero. I don't have any other entries to put in on this page. If my patient says, yes, I am a smoker, we're going to ask how many years they've smoked, and then we're also going to ask how many cigarettes, because that will give us the option to put that in. So it's important to put that information in. Again, my patient is not a smoker, so I have options at the bottom that says either done or next. I'm going to hit next. Um, the next entry asks for comments. For us, we're not going to put anything in. The next entry asks for physician. We're not going to put anything in there. The third entry asks for technician. So that's where I'm going to put my first initial and last name so we know who performed this test, okay? So I'm going to put that in. All right, 
then I'm done. So now I'm going to hit the button that says done. Now on the spirometer, it takes you back to that main page where you hit one for a new patient. Don't think you lost your information. If you look at the very small print at the top, you can see Aaron's name in there. Um, it just This is just kind of the main menu it takes you back to. So the information is in there on my patient. What I want to do next is I want to uh, uh, hit the button for what type of test we're going to perform. So test is number two, so I'm going to hit two on here. Then it gives me another menu. One is FVC, two is SVC. <coughs> we're always going to do test one, okay? So we're going to, once we go into the testing phase, we're always going to do FVC, which is the most common test done in the physician's office. Now I have my patient's information in the spirometer correctly. What I'm going to do is open up the mouthpiece and attach it to the um, spirometer itself. Now at this point, this is where I may need to ask my patient a few questions. So this tube goes right into the gray part. The patient's going to put their mouth on this portion um, and I'm going to give her some instructions, okay? All right, Erin, I'm going to give you some instructions on how to perform this test, okay? So what I need you to do is first, do you have anything in your mouth? Any gum, cough drop, candy, dentures, you know, things like that are what you need to ask the patient. So nothing in your mouth, all right. So um, we also need to ask the patient if they have any restrictive clothing. So I can see she's not wearing a scarf. Um, ladies may be wearing a girdle. If a guy's wearing a tie or something like that, we may want to have them remove that for this <coughs> test, okay? And for this test, what I need you to do is to stand up straight the whole time. When you start blowing, you're going to want to bend over, but I can't let you do that, Wait, okay? so do you want me to sit or stand? I'm going to have you stand up okay. when we do the test, and then you need to stay standing up straight the entire time, okay. okay? So when I tell you the machine is ready, I want you to take a big breath of air in, as much as your lungs can fill, okay? So big breath of air in, then you're going to take your lips and wrap them around real tight on this area here. Don't bite down, but make sure you put your teeth over that tube and you're going to blast out as hard and as fast as you can, okay? I require you to say blast out, not blow out. Blast is very different than blow. You need to make sure you tell them that they have a good tight seal or I'll make you do it over, okay? So those are two things that are really, really important for this test. So I've asked her if she had anything in her mouth, any tight clothing, told her to stand up straight, um, given her instructions about how to put it in her mouth, make sure she has a good tight seal, and to blast out as hard and as long as she can. Now, you need to keep blowing until I tell you to stop. It's going to feel like you, blow, you blew all that air out in the first two or three seconds, but you need to keep pushing and emptying your lungs until you're completely empty or until I tell you to stop. Okay, Erin? Okay, what if I start to feel like lightheaded? Or okay, and that's why we have the chair, and that's a good point. We have the chair here. If the patient starts to feel lightheaded or not well, they can sit down and, um, you know, we can give them a break in between. Okay, but Erin is young and healthy and she will do just fine. All right, Erin, we're going to go ahead and start the test. If you'll stand up. Now, at this point, I need to go back to my machine. I'm going to hit one for that FVC test, and then it's going to ask me to swipe a sensor code. There's a barcode on the side of here. And this runs just kind of like a little credit card machine there on the side, so it picked up the sensor code. Once that code is in there, now the um, machine is ready to, um, to zero and calculate. All right, Erin, what I'm going to do is have you hold this so it's comfortable for you. This. Yep, just hold it to the side and um, go ahead and take a big breath in. As much as you can, put it in your mouth, seal, push, push, blow, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, push, push all that air out, keep going a little bit longer, you're doing great, almost done. Okay, you can stop. Okay, you can have a seat and relax if you like. All right, now, what Erin did is she curled her lips in. So that test really was not a good test. My patient didn't do very well. She didn't make a good tight seal around the outside. The other thing is, is I forgot to have my patient put their nose piece on. <laughs> so that first test, we probably are going to go ahead and delete because it's not going to be a very accurate test. After each test, it's going to ask you, do you want to save or delete this test? And I'm going to show you, zoomed in here a little bit, what the test should actually look like. Um... All right, Erin, uh, we are going to discard that test, and we're going to try it again. So this time what I want you to do, you did a great job standing up. So make sure you tell your patient what they did right, not only what they did wrong. But I do need to make some corrections with this patient. You did a great job standing up. You did a great job blasting out. You did a great job. You keep blowing. But what I want you to do is put your lips outward on here and make a good tight seal. Okay? Like a, like a duck face? Not really like a duck face. Just a good tight seal like, you know, that, that, so you have a good clamp on there. Because I saw some air escaping from the corners. Okay? All right. Do you have any questions? Uh, no. All right. Let's try it again. Go ahead and stand up. Put that on your nose for me, please. 
Now on the machine, it's going back to that where it asked me which test I want to do. So I'm going to hit number one again. And then, got it on there? All right, hold this to the side. And I'm going to watch the machine for when it's ready. Hold it steady up here for me, Erin, if you will. Okay, ready? All right, now, big breath in. As much as you can, put it in your mouth. Good tight. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Nope. Okay, so you want to hold it nice and still over here, okay, Erin? Okay. <clears throat> Let's try it again. We're going to get three good tests or what we need for our patient before we can print. All right, you doing okay? Yeah. All right. So hold it to the side, big breath in, as much as you can, tight seal, blast, push, 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 go, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, almost finished, you're doing great, okay, stop. Okay, now that one we're going to save because Erin did a good job on that particular test, <clears throat> so we're going to save that.